Hello, 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 my fellow engineers. Welcome back to another real world problem. When we're building features, of course, the main objective is to have a system that works end to end with all technologies involved. In today's scenario, our system uses SQL Alchemy to speak to Postgres and return some data. However, it's also critical that all isolated components of that system work as expected too. We can't always have access to a database connection nor would we want to for our unit tests. So what can we do when we don't have a database connection? Well, this is where mocking comes in. Firstly, I'm just gonna be continuing the fruit project that I showed you in the last video. So if you wanna try and follow along, here's the updated pip file. Specifically, we'll be using pytest mock, which is a thin wrapper around pytest. Another point to note, is that we need to make the project path readable for pytest conf test, and that's how we do it in pipn. So let's say you have the following tables that your system will interact with. Here I've created models for them in SQL Alchemy. So you can see here the weight unit and the fruit table here. We've also added in some functions to return the data as JSON later on. I've also created a CRUD file to interact with the models and perform other functionality. These functions are used at a higher level in the Flask application. I've actually created a couple of scenarios that are very similar to those I faced in my day to day. One function will speak to the weight unit table and another will speak to the fruit table. You'll notice they use exactly the same query format. I have another function that uses both the previous function's returns. And finally, I have a function that persists a new object to the fruit table. All of these functions have some interaction with Postgres along the way, but we want to test the functions at an isolated level. So with this in mind, let's first test a small interaction with the weight unit table. This simple function uses the model created to get the first item that matches the filter conditions. So for this, we need a couple of things to be mocked out. Firstly, we'll need the object that we expect to be returned from the database query. So let's head to our conf test file and create the fixture that we need. Firstly, you'll need to import pytest. We'll need to mock out the Flask application as we don't want to be using the actual application database connection. Next, we'll create the mock of the weight object that we want to be returned. Finally, for this first test, we want to mock the action of SQL Alchemy itself, and we can do this by mocking the get query parameter. And this looks like this. Now that we have these following elements, we can create the following test. Under the mocked Flask application context, we can actually set the return value that we expect to receive from the database. In this case, the weight unit object that we just created. Now we can assert against the value that we want to be returned. This is a simple scenario, but you can imagine that this function may do more complex manipulation of the returned data. Add a breakpoint here. We can actually see what the return value is that we should be expecting. So as you can see here, we've got our weight ID and the weight unit that we created back in the conf test earlier on. Now we can do something similar for our get fruit from ID function. Again, we need to mock out the fruit object to be returned, but we can reuse our previous mocks. As you can see, these two tests are almost the same, except for the return value that we get from our SQL Alchemy mock is now our mock fruit object. Again, if I put a breakpoint just here, we can see what the value should be from our mocked object. And as you can see, we have this fruit object that we've mocked out. So in our next function, get weight of fruit, we use the response from both the previous functions. So in this situation, there are two ways to go around it. Firstly, we could reuse the SQL Alchemy property mock and use the side effect and return two different values of the mocked objects. This looks like this, and as you can see, we've added our side effect of our mock fruit object and our mock weight unit object. And if I go back and step through this function, 
we should see the fruit object and the weight object return from SQL Alchemy's mock. So if I step over this fruit object, we have a fruit object here, and this is from our mock. And if I step over one more time, we get our weight unit, these kilograms here. But because we've already tested these functions in this way, we don't have to go into such an in-depth way of testing. Best practice here might just be to mock out the response of each of the functions. So we've added our two mocks here, and now our test looks like this. As you can see, we've now added the return value to our mock get fruit, which is the mock fruit object, and the mock get weight unit return value is actually just the response that we expect out of that function, not the object itself. And then the assertion is just the same as it was in the previous test. Finally, one might want to mock a property of an object. For example, in this insert function, when we create a new fruit, we don't set an ID as that's handled by the database. If you remember the table, you'll see the function UUID generate v4. This is what Postgres will use to create a new ID for us. In practice, you might want to return this to the end user, for example. So in our case, when we return our JSON, we return the fruit ID. However, it's only on the commit where the fruit ID is refreshed. I can demonstrate this with an actual connection to my local Postgres. So if I add a breakpoint here, and run through the test, you'll notice that the new fruit object here has no fruit ID. And again, as I step over, no fruit ID, no fruit ID. And on the commit, it's refreshed, and the database has created this UUID for us. But what we can do is mock that property to have a value, like so. Then when the object is returned, the ID will exist to be used later down the line. Because we do the insert under a session, we'll have to mock that part out. So our final test looks like this, and we should receive back a fruit ID with some UUID returned as part of the property mock. So if I put a breakpoint here and run this, what we should see is some UUID coming up under the property. So hopefully this gives you a little insight to the use case of mocking. Me and my team use this on a fair amount in development. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll catch you on the next one.